So usually, okay. So the title of the presentation is Moving Matter in Computational Electromagnetism. And I will present on behalf of uh, Mohamed Mabasti, who is a PhD student, and myself, Professor Halim Boutayeb from University of Quebec on Outaouais in Canada. I want to dedicate this presentation in the memory of my father, who passed away uh, recently. Uh, this is the link you can see here. This is a link of my research group. Uh, presently, I have five PhD students, two postdoctoral fellows, and uh, four master students. If you are interested, I will present the different research uh, research uh, um, uh, project we are working on. Uh, if we are you are interested to join our group, uh, so we are open, and you can send me your CV uh, by email. This is the research activities we are working on. This is some example, it's not all of them. We are working on time varying waveguides, the theoretical and numerical analysis of electromagnetism with moving structures, 180 degree angular range millimeter wave beam stealing antennas, orbital angular momentum antennas. We are also working on massive MIMO using quad port antennas the effect of rain in E-band communication systems, intelligent reflective surfaces, and also RF energy harvesting. I want to talk a little bit about uh, where we are located. So um, before working at University of Quebec, Nutawe, I was engineer for almost nine years uh, in a company that is located in Canada North. Canada North, is, it is in the west of uh, uh, Ottawa. And this is uh, the Silicon Valley of Canada. So the, the biggest, uh, the largest technology park of Canada. And you can see some numbers here. So there is about 23,000 people working there and about 500 companies. Canada North is about, uh, 30 minutes by car to the University of Quebec on Ottawa. So University of Quebec on Ottawa is here. This is Ottawa, this is Gatineau. So all of this is, uh, is um, um, the, the, the capital region of Canada. University of Quebec on Ottawa has a department where, so the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, and that, that department has 10 professors in computer science and 10 professors in electrical engineering or photonics. University of Quebec, Nutawe, has about 7,000 students, 250 professors. It's not a big university, but it is located a very good place. As I say, it's, it's not far from the Technological Park of Canada, Canada North. And also you can see uh, we have many festivals in the winter, in the spring, or summer. So this is the outline of the presentation. First, we start with an introduction. In the introduction, you will see that the historical part is very important because we will uh, come back many times maybe to the historical part. Then we'll talk about the numerical aspects. Then after that, we have the moving observer, moving source, the metallic slab, the scattering objects, the Michelson Molly interferometer, interferometer, the Sinek effect, effect, Compton experiment. experiment. Uh, uh, can you can you? Professor, you're not audible. Can you hear now? Yes, yes. No, it is okay, okay. Okay, because I, I, I was hearing some echoes. Sorry. So the Sinek effect, Compton experiment, heavy side faster than light analysis, and then conclusion. So let's start with introduction. So the analysis of electronic problems with moving object has many applications, such as RF Doppler radars, astro astrophysics, the global positioning system, electromagnetic optical gyroscopes, and many others. 
it has been an important subject of interest for a very long time. There was numerous investigation that have been carried out in this area, which is interesting from a practical and also from a theoretical point of view. Let's start in the uh, uh, 18th century. Uh, James Wadley, we see the photo here. Uh, um, so, so he he found the aberration of starlight. What is the aberration of starlight? If you have a star, you see here with the number one here. Uh, that is located at a certain angle from the telescope. So you have to look at you have to put the telescope at this angle to see it. But because the Earth is moving, you have to tilt the telescope in order to see, to to see the star. So instead of seeing the star at the angle. Uh, theta, you see it at the angle phi, and that's the relation between theta and phi. Tang tangent phi is sinus theta over v over c plus cosinus theta. So this is connect. This is called the starlight, the starlight aberration of aberration of starlight, or Bradley aberration. And you can you can see this uh, see see this also for if you if you uh, see a, um, someone running in the rain. So if it doesn't run, you will see the rain going straight like this. But because it's raining, is 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 running. He has to tilt the umbrella, and uh, and he he it looks like the raining is going with a certain angle. So either you look at the light using the particle uh, theory of light, or using the wave theory of light, it's the same effect actually. So the same uh, it's the same problem. In 1810, Arago, so Francois Arago, you see the photo here, is a French scientist. He he used a prism, so a prism has a certain dilated constant. So he he was uh, expecting to have a change in the angle phi. If you see the formula here, for example, instead of having c, you will have uh, c over n when the wave propagates inside the dielectric. So he was expecting to see some effect in the stellar aberration. But however, he didn't see any effect. He always find the same formula. And he was working on the particle theory for light. He was working on Newton uh, uh, view about light, so particle. Then he asked his friend, Gustave Fresnel, who actually was really interested uh, about the uh, young experiment. So Jung did some experiment here and he, from his experiment, he he found that the light behaved like a wave. So Wong, using the wave theory, using uh, and considering that there is a light medium called the ether, he tried to find what what should be the motion of the ether in order to cancel the effect that Arago wanted to measure here. And he found this formula. So he need this propagation of light in the moving uh, uh, dielectric medium will be follow this formula in order to cancel the effect that Arago was was wanted to measure. And uh, later on, in 1851, Hippolyte Fizeau did this this experiment. He moved the water, and he has a light going in this in in this uh, waveguide here with the water, and uh, he tried to see what will be the effect of the speed of propagation in the moving water. And he found that this, this is in agreement with the formula found by Fresnel. Then later on in 1887, there is this paper that is very important, which is called On the Principle of Doppler, and is written by Voldemar Voigt. In this paper, Voigt Working uh, work on the on the on the wave equation uh, that is supposed to hold for an elastic incorporating medium, as you can see here. And this wave equation is supposed to hold for sound or for electromagnetic wave. And you can see here the wave equation that he he used how he he. He derived for a moving observer. So for the moving observer, you have this wave equation. 
he wanted to simplify the problem in order to derive a new formula for the Doppler effect, as you see. Let, let me come back to the, this wave equation. In this wave equation, C is the speed of propagation, and A is, so if it is, if it is a sound, C will be the speed of sound. If it is, is, is light, C will be the speed of light. If it is sound, A is the pressure, and if it is uh, light, A will be a transverse uh, component of electromagnetic wave. So he wanted to write this form, this for this equation, in this form. Why? Because this form is is the simplest <laughs> one. Can you can you mute? Can you mute, please? It, yes, can you please you mute? Much. Can you please mute? Yeah. So he wanted to write this equation in this form. This is a way, this is a classical wave equation. Can you please mute? Yeah. Thank you, Anish. So he wanted to write this wave equation for the moving observer. He wanted to write this wave equation for the moving server in the form of this wave equation where the server is not moving. So in order to do that, he has to do this change of variables. So this wave equation you see here with the moving observer, it's the same as this set of equations. This equation is the same that this all this equation together. For the 3D problem, so that one, this one is a is a is a 1D problem. So you only you have only x. For 3D problem, you will have x, x, y, and z, and then the the the, the variable, so the auxiliary variable that Voigt has to use for the 3D problem is x prime equal x minus vt, y prime equal y over gamma, z prime equal z over gamma, and t prime equal t minus bx over c squared. So the same. T prime we see here, except now we have Y prime and Z prime. And the gamma is what we see here. The gamma later on will be called Lorentz uh, factor, but actually both to derive it first in 1887. So for the 2D, uh, the 3D wave equation is this one. Plus this one plus this one is the same as wave equation with the moving of server. Then we have Henry Clarence from 1892 to 1904. He adopted void observable variables and he multiplied, multiplied them later with the gamma factor. So there is many paper of Florence, like this one, La Théorie électromagnétique de Maxwell et son application au mouvement. Uh, this one, attempt of a theory of electrical and optical phenomena in moving bodies, and so on. So the first one here, attempt of a theory of electrical and optical phenomena in moving bodies. He, uh, Lorentz used uh, void actually variables. He didn't multiply with gamma at that time. And uh, he, he actually uh, found some formula that supported Maxwell equation, Maxwell electrodynamics. So his result was supporting Maxwell electrodynamics. This is E prime, H prime. This is a transformed field. So U here is the speed of is the speed of uh, uh, motion of the observer, and we have here T prime and R prime. So by using this, uh, what he, he called the theorem of corresponding states, if we use, for example, the wave of, uh, um, wave function here with uh, omega T prime minus K X prime, if we replace T prime and X prime. What he found, he found, for example, a Doppler shift. If we do it, he can also find the stellar aberration. And then he can also find the FISO experiment. So you remember this formula. So he got the Fresnel formula also by using the void auxiliary variables. In 1904, he used again void variables, but he multiplied with gamma. So now you have the gamma in front of the T prime here, so here, 
also here it x prime, and then we don't have any gamma in y and z. So why he did it? He multiply with gamma because for him it will it, it will account for a length contraction hypothesis to explain the Michelson mole experiment. We will come back to the Michelson mole experiment, and for the apparent increase of the electron mass in Kaufman experiments or particle accelerator. And then we have later on, we have a special theory of relativity. Special theory of relativity use exactly the same maths than uh, Lorentz work, but the, just the interpretation is different. So let's compare the Lorentz ether theory and the special theory of relativity. If we, can, if we compare them in terms of agreement with experiment, so in the literature, they consider them to be equal. So in the literature, they, they consider that they are both equal and they are all both valid in terms of uh, uh, um, uh, uh, validation with experiment, but usually they prefer the special theory of relativity. However, it's uh, this, uh, an explanation of, for example, of the Saniac effect with STR, STR is subject to debates. In Lorentz ether theory, space is absolute, time is absolute, and speed of light is relative. In special theory relativity, space is relative, time is relative, and speed of light is absolute. In Lorentz ether theory, the void Lorentz transformation, so I call them void Lorentz transformation because I consider that void is an inventor. Usually in the literature, they call them Lorentz transformation, but actually void is an inventor. So I, I call them void Lorentz transformation. So usually they are not fundamental. So in Lorentz ether theory, they are not fundamental except for the length contraction, contraction. That's the only thing that add a physical effect in Maxwell equation. If you don't put the gamma factor, then, then uh, the, it's just a change of variables. And in special theory, they are fundamental, this transformation. In terms of applicability, uh, applicability for general method in computational electromagnetics with moving objects, it is much simpler to use this theory, so Lorentz ether theory. It is simpler if you don't, if you ignore the length contraction. However, for special relativity, it's complex to analyze, for example, uh, multiple objects moving at different speeds. So in our work, we prefer Lorentz ether theory, and the length contraction is neglected, but we will see that the Doppler relativistic effect for moving observer and moving source can still be added and can still be considered in the problems. So let's uh, see the gamma factor as a function of V over C. So what we can see is, it's only after when, when you have V over C equals 0 0.416, then that, that the, yeah, the gamma factor uh, is more than one by 10%. So if you, if you are low, lower than that, you can neglect actually the gamma factor. You can consider it's equal to one, as long as you are lower than this. So this can be used as a benchmark. When V is smaller than VB, we can uh, neglect the relativistic, relativistic effect. If it is smaller than, uh, higher than VB, then we cannot neglect the relativistic effect. Now I want to present the finite difference time method, so FDTD. This is based on the discretization of Maxwell equation in time and space. We have rotational of electric field equal minus mu delta h over delta t. So E is electric field, magnetic field h, permeability. Uh, and then we have rotational h, sigma e plus epsilon delta e over delta t. h, magnetic field, electric field, uh, uh, conductivity, and permittivity. Maxwell equation can be written in max in, in, in uh, uh, using Cartesian coordinates. They will have this form. So this is here in uh, in isotropic medium. Uh, so in, for example, free space or a dielectric medium. Then uh, in FGTD, we use the discretization. So this discretization, we we write the position in terms of i j k, and n will be the time. And we use a finite difference. 
for example, this is first derivative. We use this uh, approximation of, with the error of order two. And the same thing for the, the time. And this is a yeast cell. Because of the different equation, the position of the different electric field, electric field and magnetic field components will not be the same on one cell. Here, this is an example of the update of the magnetic field component. So based on this equation and using finite difference, we get all the equation of the uh, update or the, of the different electric and magnetic field components. Here, this is an algorithm that we are using. What you see in black, this is the, the, the Yi algorithms. So this is the usual algorithm. And what you see in red, this is what we added in order to move the objects. So in all algorithm, we can have one object moving here. So we will define what is MFX. We will define after that what is, what is N, uh, this one, MFX1. We can have first object, second object, etc. We can have many objects. The object can be an observer. It can be a source or it can be a squatting uh, object. We can also move an, an electromagnetic field, as we will see later. So red, this is our algorithm. Now I want to compare with the, what it is done in literature. In the literature, they don't use, usually they don't use this algorithm that we are doing here. What they do, they, I come back here, they use a transformation of electric and magnetic field, and they transform also its space and time. Okay, so this method, I will call it uh, change of reference frame or the utilization of void Lorentz transformation. So this concept actually has is, uh, has uh, different problems. First, it is limited to object moving at uniform speed. We cannot use this concept for rotating, accelerating, or oscillating object. It cannot be used for multiple objects moving at different speeds. And also, the moving objects are not visualized. If you look, for example, in Mikonsky space-time diagram, everyone knows this kind of diagram. It's supposed to represent something moving, but you don't see anything moving there. And also, it's, it, it's, it's not clear how this concept can be used to differentiate between a moving observer a moving source or a moving scattering object. It should be different for, if, for the, the, the three kind of uh, body. So the objective of this work is to analyze moving bodies using the FDTD method without the implementation of void Lorentz transformation. And then we will analyze the result and compare with relativistic result, which we consider as a reference. And also we will use our method for analyzing new problems and get new results. So let's talk now about the numerical aspects. So for our problem, we use a windowed sign for the excitation, and it has a sharp frequency spectrum, as we can see here. So this is a sign, and it is um, uh, with a window, so windowed sign. And if you, if you look in the frequency domain, you will see a maximum at a certain frequency that corresponds to the frequency of the sign. We use this function because we will have a Doppler effect, so we will we will see that frequency change because of more of, of, uh, of the motion of the body. And also, we cannot use an infinite uh, sinusoid because we want to to simulate with a finite time. So the windows window uh, sign function is ideal. We found also the FDT dissipation equation didn't, don't, doesn't change uh, 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 when we move the source of server uh, or the scratching object. It changes if we move the electromagnetic field, but we don't uh, consider this problem in, uh, now. So the, the classical dissipation equation, FDT dissipation equation, is given by this. So what we see here is, is that depending on delta x, we can have um, we can we can make the wave propagating at high frequency. Uh, uh, we can make them propagating with lower uh, speed, for example. In the numerical aspect, we have to talk about the effect of discontinuous motion. 
when we move inside the uh, computer national volume in FDTD, we move from one cell to one cell, so we don't have motion inside the cell. In blue, we see wh what will be, what will be the motion if we have continuous movement. So the position will be VT plus X0. That's what we see here in blue. But uh, because we we are moving in the numerical FDTD, the motion be becomes what we see in black here. We can approximate this uh, this black curve with this uh, equation here. You see the red one? It's really close to the black one. So we, we can recognize here the continuous movement. And here we added this one, A sinus omega G T. And omega G is a function of theta delta T that, we, that we, the formula is given here, delta X and V, the speed of propagation. Sorry, I should come back here. So we see that the motion will be approximated, can be approximated by this formula in FDTD. So because of this, what happened is, so you see it here. Okay, I stop here. I will stop this one too. When we we have a, 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 pl a plane wave source, so the, we have a, here a plane wave source. I should stop here. Propagating in this direction. Why I say this direction? Because here we can see the frequency increased. There is a Doppler effect. The frequency increased. Here the frequency is smaller than that frequency. So the plane wave source is going in this direction. So we have here higher frequency and here lower frequency. But what happened is instead of having only this wave here, we have also this wave which is a very high frequency. That's what we see here when we look. The electric field has a function of time at this observation point. We can see here very high frequency. And it's propagating at lower, lower velocity because actually we use, if I come back to the previous here, we use the dispersion equation uh, purposely. We make it, we use, for example, this uh, value of delta x in order to make the higher frequency propagating at lower speed. This helps us to see this uh, undesirable effect, an effect that we didn't want actually. This is an artifact which is due to the FDTD, due to the discontinuous motion. And we found the equation based on the, the previous formula. It is not difficult to, 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 to demonstrate. If we use this position, we can demonstrate that the electric field uh, will be given by this formula. And this formula actually, so the J here is a, a Bessel function. Uh, this formula show actually that we have harmonics related to omega G that we defined uh, previously. So a higher frequency. We still have the main, uh, uh, sorry, the main field that we see here. And we have harmonics here at higher frequency and there's a effect that we don't want. So we found that if we use two layer of uh, current sources, it is easy to show by this formula here. We will we can mitigate this undesirable effect. So now you see we don't have this problem. It becomes very low. That's what we see here. So we kept only this one. So this is a, a uh, this is a technique that allows to resolve this issue. If we come back, we can, in order to, uh, a way to explain this. Uh, this idea is if you add this square uh, um, staircase in black with another one that is uh, uh, that has uh, that starts uh, one cell after, then the, uh, the average of uh, both will give you something close to the blue. So that's what you see here. So we have we move this effect by doing this. About the space mesh, uh, space mesh and time step. So the pulsation frequency that we uh, talked about previously, omega g, it need to be larger than the maximum pulsation frequency that is considered in the simulation. So based on uh, empirical analysis, we found that omega g should be larger than two times omega max. By using this formula and the formula of omega g, this imposes 
this equation. So we need delta x smaller than the zero zero point five v over f max. So you see that delta x is a function here or the speed of propagation. And the stability criterion actually is 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 a classical formula. It's delta delta g smaller than delta x over c square root of three. So based on this formula, what we see is uh, we will have um, the number of cells and uh, uh, what we call here M fix. M fix is a number of iteration without motion. So after after a, set, a certain number of iteration, we move one cell, and that's uh, the M fix is given by this formula. So. And uh, this this uh, this function here means that we take the integer. So what we see here is a, is a number of cells, the number of iteration, and m fix. So if we look to number of iteration, number of cell has a function of speed. You can see that they increase a lot at low speed. When a v decrease, both of this will will increase a lot. So simulating a low speed. Uh, require a, lo a lot of iteration and uh, a, lo a lot of cells. So uh, it's, it's very consuming uh, in terms of uh, uh, computation. So it's, with, it's, it's, it's better to simulate at higher velocity if we want to simulation uh, to have the result fast. And based on the simulation at high velocity, we can see uh, the trend, how, how the, what's the effect in terms of V of SC, for example. If we want to simulate uh, a lower speed, uh, an, an idea will be to use some solution with subcell uh, motion. For example, we can we could use the Holland thin Y formalism. So we didn't develop this yet, uh, moving that in the cells. This is something we want to do later. And some paper actually propose with a moving dialectic interface uh, to use some kind of uh, um, uh, so approximation in terms of the dielectric constant. So that's kind of idea. So interpolation using some idea of interpolation. So now we talk about moving observer. So in this simulation, I should stop. OK, let's go back. So uh, if I compare, uh, so here the source, the plane wave source is not moving. So we have the same wave on both sides, same frequency, one propagating toward x and the other one toward minus x. And we see here in the red is an observer. So this is where we we get electric field at a different point. We move it using the algorithm that we described previously. So we move and then we can save the electric the, the field. The result is what we see here. So the the the, the one in uh, bold here is with no motion, so v over c equals zero, and the other one they are obtained for different v over c. So as I as I said before, we have to use v over c in the order of the speed, so v, uh, 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 close to the speed, v close to the speed of light, in order to 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 in order to, to not take too long time to simulate. But uh, we, we, we can have, we can find very interesting results even by uh, you know, limiting ourselves to high speed. So the first interesting result with the moving observer, we found that if we call E prime, e prime Z, the electric field when there is motion and EZ when there is no motion, we found that E prime Z is equal to E Z T uh, and here multiplied by one plus minus V over C. It's easy to show, to, to see it. Uh, uh, you can take some example, you will see it and it's it's working very far. So what does it mean? What does this mean? If we had A Z here a function of time, we can get the E prime Z as a function of T by using this. And actually, this has an analogy with Lorentz local time. So we remember the t, the Boyd uh, formula, which is this one, t plus or minus 
xv over c squared. If we take x equals ct, then we will find this. So what is what uh, Lawrence called the local time is also here in the FDTD when we move the observer. Except here there is no change of time. Time here is absolute. It's just this Lawrence local time here, which just is just expression of the Doppler effect in time domain. If we plot these curves here in frequency domain, we will get the different curves that we see here. So this one is for v, v over c equals zero. This one v over c equals 0 0.2, etc. So what we see, we see the frequency is changing. And if we take the value of the frequency and we normalize with the uh, the frequency that uh, f0, so the frequency when there is no motion, and we plot it here. So that's what we plot here, f prime over f. We found that it's given by one plus V over C. That's for the frequency, so the Doppler effect. In terms of amplitude, we found that the amplitude is inverse. So amplitude is A prime F over A prime AF is one over one plus V over C. If we move on the other direction, it will be minus V over C. If we move with a certain angle, it will be one plus V over C cosinus theta. Okay. So we found the, the, the FDTD match with this uh, depth curves here. And this curves, this formula actually, this is the other, the, the, this formula are obtained by the wave, uh, the wave theory give the same formula. The relativistic, uh, so the special relativity give this formula with, with a gamma. So we can have also cosinus theta here, but, uh, but special theory of relativity has a gamma factor here, which we don't have. If VOC is smaller than 0 0.4, for example, then we can neglect gamma can be uh, considered to be equal to one. But if we want to consider higher velocity, so VOC more than 0 0.4, uh, in our uh, FDT code, we can still introduce the elastic effect. So the idea we propose is to use this idea. So we take the EZ that we obtain, we measure it in FDTD, and uh, we use this formula. So the EZ modify as a function of T will be the EZ that is we, we measured and for gamma T here. So by using this uh, this method, we we are able to to get the, uh, the relativistic Doppler effect for the moving observer. We also analyzed what happened if the observer is rotating. So observer is rotating, and here F zero is the frequency, for example, of the uh, um, of the signal. So we have a plane wave source, and then we have rotating observer. And FR is the frequency of rotation. So we obtain really interesting results that are uh, uh, consistent and uh, meaningful. Uh, so we have peaks that correspond to um, uh, intermodulation between the frequency of rotation and the frequency of the signal. We also can analyze the an observer that is accelerating. So if the, if the observer is accelerating toward X, so to, uh, or the observer is so toward the source or away from the source, what we observe is, of course, uh, some kind of chip signals. So frequency increase, uh, decrease or frequency increase. Now we talk, we will talk about the moving source. So I will, uh, I will come back here. So we don't have the the discontinuous effect the uh, effect because we have remo removed that using uh, several plane wave source. Uh, but now we're going to analyze the amplitude. So the source here is moving in this direction. This plane wave source, we don't see the plane wave source. What we see is we see the field. The plane wave source is moving in this direction. And you can see this electric field here has uh, higher frequency 
and this one lower frequency. That's the Doppler effect. And then here we plot for different V over C, what happened to the amplitude. We can see in black here, it is for V equals equal zero. And the other one, when we increase V over C. So what happened is the amplitude is increasing. And if V equal C, so if uh, the, spe uh, the, spe uh, the speed of the moving source is, uh, this, uh, is, is, is correlated to the speed of light, then the amplitude becomes infinite. Okay. Uh, then here we propose a uh, realistic plane wave source, another model for the plane wave source. We use current sources, you see here, I, and we use resistor. And then we move the we, we, we then we move the plane wave source. If the resistor is close to zero, then we have uh, uh, something that is close to the ideal plane wave source. So it is the same like before, but you can see the amplitude now is is less. It's the same. It's not the same speed because it's, it should be the same frequency if it was the same speed. But uh, what is important here is do you see the result here? All they have all the same amplitude. So by changing the model of the uh, the plane wave source, making making uh, by making making the plane wave source more ideal, we can see the amplitude is not changing, and that's a very important result here. The issue of the independence of the plane wave source uh, uh, exists also in the fabric per cavity when it is excited from inside. When doing my thesis, I worked on the fabric per cavity. This is some uh, papers you, you can refer to. If I send a plane wave to a fabric per cavity made of two layers of metallic wires, you can add all the transmitted field. So you have multiple reflection inside the cavity and you can add all of them using this formula. So what happened, you will see that uh, the amplitude here, or the maximum of the amplitude, when all the wave they are in phase, is given by one. So that's this is kind of transmission you can plot. And you see, if you have no loss, the maximum transmission will be one. Now, if you put the plane wave source inside, you use exactly the same method. The formula will change because you are you are sending the wave from inside. If you use the same method that you, you we use here, the same method, and you get you get another formula. And now, if you look to the amplitude, the amplitude is not max. The maximum is not one. It can even be infinite. It's more than one. And why is it like this? It's because this plane wave source here is not interacting interacting with the waves. This is like this plane wave source without resistor. So this is like this plane wave source that we used before here. And this one is is, 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 is that plan kind of plane wave source is, is non-ideal. It's not matched to the free space. And that's why we can increase the power by by using the cavity. OK. So the high impedance plane wave source is not realistic. And from this, uh, we think that uh, the EV side moving charge analysis should be revisited. So EV side used in 1888 in this paper, the electromagnetic effect of a moving charge. He used Maxwell equation, so only theoretic, uh, uh, with analytical uh, formula. He de he derived the electric field when where the charge is moving, and he got a formula that we see here, uh, the amplitude of the electric field increase with the speed of motion, and it become infinite when this, the, the motion uh, equal to the speed, the speed of motion is equal to the speed of light. And if we, based on our previous analysis, what we see here, this work should be revisited because if the charge now has, has, has an impedance, and if we make it more ideal, then the amplitude will not increase. And also Einstein's special relativity should be revisited. Einstein, because he make the he make the problem symmetric, he has also a problem with the moving observer. In his paper, he said from this equation, it appears that 
a phone observer which moves visibility velocity c toward the source of light the source should appear infinitely intense so for him the amplitude increase also for the observer when the observer move to the source he will see the amplitude increasing more and more and going infinite if he, he go to speed of light i get this picture actually from internet and what we see in this picture this is what we uh, we got in fdtd and this is what makes sense if the source move in this direction or this direction the amplitude doesn't change only its frequency changing the same thing if the observer move here or move, or move here, he, he, he will not see amplitude changing. He will see uh, uh, frequency changing. So that's very really important because we will come back to this problem when we will talk about the faster and light problem. So here we, we plotted the, the spectrum when the, for the moving ideal plane wave source for different value of V over C. And then we take the different frequencies and we plot them here as a function of V over C. So we found that F prime over F is, is given by one over one minus V over C. It's plus if it go to the other direction and minus if it, so plus minus depending on the direction. This one, the blue one is for the frequency and the red one is for the amplitude. Amplitude is inverse. You see here it is inverse, one minus V over C. In relativity, the formula is given by this. It has a uh, gamma, uh, inverse gamma factor here, which we can be neglect if V over C is lower, lower, less than 0 0.4. But we can, if it's more than 0 0.4, we can use this formula here. We can change the electric field of the source before sending the, the before sending the source. Uh, the, the, so in, in, in the FDTD, it's not difficult to do that just by using this relation that we propose here. So we can implement the relativistic Doppler effect for one moving source or two moving source, multiple moving source, and they can move at different speeds. But if we, if we, this is possible with our method, but this is not possible with the transformed electric field by using volatile load transformation. Because the, if you transform the electric and magnetic field in Maxwell equation, you will be uh, uh, you will have to do it only for one speed. Okay. Uh, another thing we did. So let me let me come back here. As I say here, the, the the source is moving in this direction. We can use two observation points, one here, for example, and one here, and we could we can measure the speed of propagation between two points. Okay. It's not difficult to do that in FDTD. So we did that and we found that speed propagation is independent of the speed of the source. So we can move the source at any speed. We will always have the same speed of propagation. And actually this is in agreement with the Einstein paper. So his paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies is really about electromagnetism with uh, moving matter. So it's really similar to uh, the title of our presentation. And in his paper, he has a postulate that says a light is always propagated with a definite velocity C, which is independent of the state of motion of the emitting body, so of, of the state of motion of the source. Uh, here we have a, a moving line source. So we move a line source, we can see the Doppler effect, frequency increase here, frequency decrease here, and we can measure uh, it's, 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 it's not difficult. We can measure in, in the field distribution. We can measure the wavelengths, and then we can get the formula, the, the frequencies. And we found that this is an agreement here with this formula. And here, this is agreement with one at uh, transverse. And this one is agreement with this formula. So one over P over C, one over one minus V over C, and here's the one. So if it if if it were the uh, the relative to the Doppler effect, we should have inverse gamma here and also inverse gamma here and inverse gamma here. It has a factor. So as I say, it's, it's not easy to, it's not difficult to do it. It's, if we, we, we just have to use this formula here. We can also have a accelerating plane wave source. So, I plot here for accelerating 
IDL plane wave source, so the amplitude doesn't change. And the other one is accelerating plane wave source, which, it, which, which is non-ideal, so the amplitude increasing. Here we have rotating line source, so we can see different frequency in the spectrum, which has intermodulation or the frequency of rotation and the frequency of the source, uh, the science function. Here we have rotating line source and we have an observer in the middle. For that one, we have no double effect. Now I will talk about uh, metallic slab. So moving metallic slab, we found very interesting result for this one. And I'm going to present now. So what happened here? I should. Here we show the electric field distribution and here it's magnetic field distribution. We consider that electric field equals zero in the moving metal. At, uh, later, I will talk about other uh, model or other boundary condition or condition, sorry, for the metal. Here we consider it's equal to zero. So we have e here E equals zero and it's moving. So what happened? We found that there is a transferred wave, some wave going on the other side. At low velocity, this, this transferred wave is very, is very small, actually. The amplitude is very small. But we don't see here any, any electric field inside. There is no electric field inside. But there is a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is static. And when this edge reach the magnetic field, we start to see the, the electric field, electric, electromagnetic field. So we have electric and magnetic both. You see it here? Then we analyzed how much we have transferred wave, how much we have reflected wave. And of course, you see the Doppler effect. You see here the frequency increase. Because it's, we're moving here in this direction. Uh, we did an analytical method. We have a paper actually with all the details about this, about the analytical method. So we we uh, we calculate how much wave is transferred and how much wave is reflected. And uh, and also in FDTD, we analyze the formula and uh, the formula is uh, we got in FDT is agreement in an agreement with the analytical formula. So we found that the frequency uh, for the transferred wave doesn't change. So always the same frequency has its, uh, the excitation frequency. Uh, the amplitude is given by this. So it's, it's, it is easy to, sh to show that this uh, is equal is um, is in the order of two v over c. If we, we neglect the all the, the the higher order of v over c. This one will be in the order of 2v over c, so very small for, for normal speed. For the reflected wave, the Doppler effect is, is given by this, which is actually the same formula that has a special relativity. And the amplitude here is, is inverse of the frequency formula. And here we plotted the, for the amplitude for the transmission and FDTT. Uh, let's talk about the Lorentz transformed electric field, which is E prime equal to E plus V cross B. So they are they are all vectors actually. So E prime is vector, V and V they are vector, and this is a cross product. Uh, by using the total time derivative, so with, without using Lorentz or void Lorentz information, just by using total time derivative, that's actually what Lorentz did, and using the divergence of magnetic field equals zero. We can find this formula E prime equal E plus V cross B. So let's suppose for our condition, instead of putting E equals zero, we will put E prime equals zero. So if we put E prime equals zero, then we will have E equal minus V cross B. Okay. So we did we did analyze uh, uh, this case. So the E equals zero, that was the case I showed before. Uh, can you mute, please? Uh, please, can you mute? Can you please mute? Can you please mute? Okay. So the equal zero. That was uh, that was the case I I uh, I, sh I show before. 
we have a transferred field. That's why I say uh, this is why I say here yes. The amplitude is given by one minus v over c over one plus v over c. It is in the inverse than the formula for the frequency. So here the amplitude decreasing and the frequency increase. Okay. We found when we analyze energy of the transferred uh, field and the um, reflected field, we see that there is a loss of energy. Okay. Now if we use E equal minus V cross B, now the amplitude here is, you see it's an inverse of this. The amplitude is increasing with V over C and with the same formula has a frequency. So the Doppler effect in terms of frequency is the same for all. The only difference is amplitude. So for this case here, we found that the amplitude here is the same as a frequency. And there is no transferred field for this case. Nothing go to the other side. And we analyze energy. We found that there is an energy increase. So in the literature, they explain that by saying that this is the energy of the moving uh, object it that is transferred to the field. Uh, this result actually is the same result than special relativity. Special relativity gives the same result for the amplitude and the same result for the frequency. But there is a problem. It doesn't agree with the ex experiment. For example, in this paper here of 1989, they use plasma, which actually is supposed to give the same formula in terms of a, a Doppler effect for the amplitude and the frequency change. And they found that the frequency change uh, uh, following the formula, so it is really correct with the, in terms of frequency, but they didn't see any relativistic increase of the amplitude. So they, they didn't get this one. It, that, the, the, the amplitude doesn't increase. And also they found that it become transparent when V over C increase. They found that the medium become transparent. That means there is a transferred field. So we try to see if we can be in between this case and this case, and if we can have conservation of energy. And we found that if we use minus 0 0.4 V cross B, E equal this, we have a transferred field. Uh, I don't remember what was the formula for the amplitude here, but uh, it, it doesn't really matter. But what we found is if we add the energy of the transferred field and add energy of the reflect field, then we have conservation of energy for this case. Now I will talk about a scattering object. Here we have a partially reflecting surface. So we have metallic wires, periodic structure with metallic wires moving in this direction. And we can see the Doppler effect. So the frequency increase in this direction. And, and uh, we analyze the, the, the Doppler effect and the formula is the same as special relativity that we see here. And then we, we inclinate we use an inclined pyrus, as you see here. And what you see is if it's not moving, the wave, go, the, the, here we use a 45 degree for, of inclination. So wave go, will go at 90 degree here. If there is motion, the angle will change. So depending on the, uh, the, the speed, we will have different angle here and different frequency. So we analyze this and uh, we plotted the different formula which are in agreement with the uh, with uh, Lawrence and Michelson analysis, uh, uh, which they have done analytically by using Eugen's principle and uh, and uh, and Fermat principle of this time. So that's different formula, and they are correct, and uh, uh, FDTD is in agreement with that. We also tested broadly stellar aberration actually by using FDTD. So what you see here is FDTD we can give us a uh, Doppler effect, can give us broadly, and we will see it, it, we can also implement the Fresnel effect. So what Lawrence, if I come back in the beginning, what Lawrence did in order to, to, to support Maxwell equation by using, uh, um, yeah, yeah, by using void variables, he, were, he was able to do that. And that, this work was a real success because he was supporting Maxwell equation. But we, 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 we were able to do the same, but without changing time and without changing sp uh, space. 
just by moving inside LDTD because we have we have this ability to move object inside Maxwell equation by using numerical solution of Maxwell equation. If we come back in the past, if Voigt had FDTD, but it was in 1887, he didn't have ADTD. He, did, he, couldn't, he couldn't resolve this equation numerically. This is why he has to do this chain of relevance. But if we, because we, now we have this FDTD, we can move the object uh, numerically. So we don't need to do the to use the axial level values. Um, now uh, let me. So we, uh, now I'm in the uh, scattering objects. So scattering objects. So we have seen this one PRS. Here we have a metallic wire. Okay, and we can also see the Doppler effect. That's what we described here. This is in agreement with the analysis we have done with the with the uh, um, with the metallic slab, for example. And here I plot two case. If we have e equal zero or e equal minus v x, but I but we think it should be in between, or maybe equal e equal zero is the correct. One. And we can see the difference. Uh, here we can see some wave looks like shock waves or because we have, have trans some transmitted wave inside the metallic wire. Here we have a static electric field and we have uh, and we move. The metallic wire. And we can also analyze the shock waves here. Here we have a um, uh, half space. Uh, the dietic half space moving. And we can analyze the Doppler effect as function of the the, the direct constant of the medium, uh, the medium, and the the, the inclination angle, etc., and the speed. And uh, we can also have a sorry. We can also have a moving uh, direct cylinder or multiple cylinder. Sorry. This one, OK, this one, I don't know why. OK, this one is, is a multiple cylinder moving at different speeds, and uh, the, the results are really meaningful and in agreement with the previous analysis. Here we have an oscillating metallic plate, and this is an agreement with measurement we have done actually for, with, the, with an oscillating or a vibrating metallic plate. Uh, the, the results show that there is in the spectrum Different peaks, frequent peaks, frequency peaks, which are uh, intermodulation of the frequency of excitation and the frequency of uh, vibration. Here we have an accelerating, oscillating surface. We can also analyze uh, aircrafts, uh, the steel aircraft, an asteroid. Uh, here, this is a uh, 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 human with uh, resp respiration, so the his chest is moving here because of respiration and heartbeat. So I come back to the Michelson Morley interferometer. So with this uh, technique, we there is many things we can replicate or we can analyze uh, analyze uh, that has not been done before, because if you look. All the papers about Michelson Morley interferometer uh, in the literature, they use analytical techniques. So we wanted to see if we what's the difference if we use uh, this full wave techniques better than Maxwell equation. And uh, we got a very interesting result. So in the, the principle of the Michelson Morley interferometer is we suppose the Earth is moving, and uh, and uh, we have uh, we send a wave here in. in um, at, um, uh, in this uh, transverse direction and longitudinal direction, and because of motion, the the time will, should be different. And uh, the, the time is given here, so the 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 duration of the so when we will see the light here. So we should not receive them at the same time, and because of that, we will have uh, uh, a fringe shift. So the, the phase shift here. So you can see the formula for this longitudinal is given by this formula, and this one is given by this one. 
and that's the velocity of Earth around the sun. So three multiplied by 10 per, uh, power of four meter per second. So here we analyze in longitudinal direction. The source is moving and the observer here is moving. They are all moving. And here we use the mirror, so the mirror, the semi-reflecting mirror, so that one, 45 degree. And also we analyze this, uh, the speed of progression here. So we can calculate time delay. So we calculate the different time delays. And uh, what we got is for the transverse direction, which one is it? Uh, so for longitudinal direction, we got exactly the same formula. For transverse direction, we got different formula than the, 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 the formula that was presented. But actually, it's because we found that the two beams, like this beam here and this beam here, they were not, they were divergent. So we need to tilt this one very little, not that much, it depends on the speed. Not It should not be 45 degree. If we turn it very little to make them uh, convergent, then we got the same formula here with the, the gamma factor. Okay. And actually in the literature, Michelson uh, uh, talked about the divergence too. And uh, we were we were very surprised to find that uh, he, he did analyze this. And uh, presently on this problem, we are also analyzing the effect of the phase of the friction coefficient for moving mirror because there is an asymmetry in the problem. Uh, this mirror here, which is 90 degree, and this and this one, which should, it should be uh, straight, so uh, normal, they don't have the same phase of coefficient coefficient when the uh, structure is moving. And this um, add an asymmetry in the problem. So there's a bias in the, pro in the, in the problem. We also want to analyze the effect of the moving field uh, yeah, and uh, actually here in the second um, interferometer, uh, in order to increase the lens, uh, Michelson and Mole they use many mirrors, that, as we see here. But increasing the mirror, the number of mirrors here, doesn't resolve the problem here of the phase of reaction because you just increase, also you add them actually. And then in a letter, letter in 1925, uh, based on the Sanyak effect, uh, we'll talk about Sanyak effect after, they use another interferometer which doesn't have the problem of asymmetry. So in this interferometer, the wave propagating its direction and the wave propagating its direction, they are using the same uh, pass, uh, this is, so this is the same waveguide. So there is no asymmetry in this problem. Uh, by using this, they were able to, uh, to get a positive result. So they can get the, the the speed of rotation of the Earth. Now we'll talk about the Sanyak effect. Here we have a waveguide made of air. And here this is a waveguide with a dielectric. The Sanyak effect has application of in GPS and uh, also for electromagnetic and optical gyroscopes. In GPS, they use the Sanyak effect. They have to use it in order to, to uh, to get if you, if they don't use the sinic effect, they, they will not get the right position of a receiver because of the rotation of Earth. The satellite is rotating and and the receiver is is, is moving. Uh, uh, um, they have to use that effect. So the that effect is detailed here. So you have the, the delay depending on the uh, um, the the downlink and the uplink. You can see here. The, the the difference, and uh, if we take approximation here, we will get this formula. In our simulation, so in the literature, they they analyze this by by transforming the electric and magnetic field using void law transformation. In our simulation, we only move the observer and the source, and we get the, the sonic effect. If we use the dielectric medium, we have to move the field with this speed. So based on the Fresnel-Dag effect, 
we implemented that, we move the field with this formula here. And if we do that, we found that the sinect effect here is in independent of the, uh, the dilate constant. And this is an agreement with this paper, uh, which, was, which was published in 2004. So in this paper, they found that it is independent of the refractive index. But it's also independent of the type of motion. We tested that in FDTD. So instead of doing rotation here, we can also move linearly with the, with the, with the, with the dielectric. And experimentally, they found that with the, um, they use optical fiber, they move with a very high speed, and they got the Sarniak uh, type effect. And this cannot be explained with special relativity. But this is uh, uh, well explained with the wave theory of light. Now I'll talk about the Compton experiment. So Compton experiment, it was uh, done here one year, 100 years ago, 1923. And uh, the analysis, so they use X-ray and a ta graphite target. And uh, the analysis actually is based on the uh, quantum theory and the spatial relativity. And they found this formula that they have two peaks in the, in the wavelengths, in the wavelength spectrum. Um, so, uh, omega uh, lambda prime, lambda is at zero degree, and lambda prime, depending on different angle, uh, they have they found this formula here. So H is the Planck constant, M E is the mass of the electron, speed of light, and theta is angle, as you see here. This is a result kind of result they got. So they excite here, for example, with the X-ray. Uh, uh, tube and the carbon target by sending his X-ray, the electron will move uh, the free electron. And then if they look at different angle, they got this kind of curves. So at zero degree, 45 degree, etc. So they have two peaks. And the, diff the, the, the distance between the two peaks is given by this formula. So as I said, this formula, they got this formula by using special relativity and by using quantum theory. So in FDTD here, we move a line source and we have a metallic wire, which is not moving. And we move the line source with a certain speed, V. And then we analyze a different angle, the spectrum. And that's the spectrum we got. So at zero degree, we got this, uh, et cetera. So, and this one is uh, 90 degree, 45 degree, 135 degree, et cetera. If we look at the distance between the two, so we can analyze this also analytically. This is a moving line source. We know what's the formula of the Doppler effect for the moving line source uh, as a function of the angle. And uh, we can replicate actually what they got in the experiment. So the experiment that I show, I show here, we can replicate that in FDTD. So that's what we got in FDTD, really close to this value here. And the formula that we got in FDTD is this one. V over C multiplied by 1 minus cosinus theta. That's what you see, we see here. So this curve is the same as what we got in FDTD. So delta lambda over lambda i is, I is excitation. If we want to, to, uh, to, to make this the same as what they got in the theory, this formula, then we found that we need this equation. We got this equation. So th if this one equal this this one, then we need we have this equation. M zero V equal H over lambda I. And actually, this formula is is the conservation of momentum for a moving electron with speed V, and it has been derived by Louis de Broglie. So this show that our approach is correct because is in agreement with Louis de Broglie theory. And now I will talk about the uh, EV side faster than light analysis. So is faster than light possible? So many scientists like Tesla, they claim that they have measured faster than light speed for particles. In the literature, it is stated that it should it will invalidate the special theory of relativity. However, in Lorentz ether theory, which is validated by the same experiment and use the same equation than STR, 
space all of light has a limit. Uh, um, it is a limit of the model, not uh, a theoretical limit of reality. In the beginning of 19th century, 20th century, Wilhelm Wien uh, was among well-known scientists who claimed that the speed of light cannot be exceeded based on EV side analysis of the moving charge. The energy becomes infinite when the speed of light is reached. And he had a strong influence on young scientists such as Einstein. But if you remember, we found that if we change this analysis of EV side, if we consider a charge that is more realistic, then the amplitude should not increase and energy should not increase when the charge is moving. Uh, what was the opinion of EV side? EV side, he said, he, he, he said, I'm not afraid of infinity. So even if he got result with infinite, infinity, he said, I'm not afraid of infinity. And then he, he, did analyze, he did the analysis, what would happen if the charge moved faster than speed of light? So he did this analysis, and uh, that's what we see here. And that's uh, you see here in his paper. And he found a formula of the, uh, the, the shock waves angle or max angle. Uh, and uh, actually, so he, hold, he did this analysis. He used Maxwell equation. And he, he uh, so he, he just resolved it analytic, analytically. By using FDTD, we did the same. We move the line source faster than light, and that's what we see here. This is for a certain speed. If, for example, is one point V over C is equal one point seventeen. If we analyze the angle for different V over C, we found this formula, and that's exactly the same formula that we see here that uh, AB side found. And this is a NX max formula actually. NX max form NX max uh, um, derived this formula for uh, sound wave for acoustic wave. So now we go to the conclusion. I hope I was not too long. Uh, if we go back to the different formulas, uh, the, the main formulas about the Doppler effect. So for the moving observer, we say that in FD, the classical wave theory or FDTD give us this formula. So we remove uh, uh, toward the source here and no angle. OK, and the plane wave source moving toward observer, we get this formula. Moving reflector, uh, moving toward observer and source is we have this formula. Here, this is a combination of both because the reflector is an observer when we receive the wave and then it becomes a, a source when we it, it diffract. That's why we have the combination of these two here. So in special theory of relativity, with special theory of relativity, we have the, here the gamma factor, and here we have the inverse gamma, and here we have the same formula, no, no, no change. And we said that we, that we can also modify FDTD by uh, changing the electric field for the moving source, electric field for moving observer. So we can also get the same. That's why I said modify FDTD. So we can also get the same. So in conclusion, the utilization of the DFTTD method for moving bodies without the implementation of void lens formation give meaningful results in different problems. We encourage the implementation of moving object in the commercial FDTD software. The relativistic effects can be added in the moving source and the moving observer by using these formulas. And here we can see a different structure we have analyzed. So thank you very much, and uh, I will be happy to respond to if you have any question. Uh, professor, there are a few questions in the chat window. OK, uh, should I stop sharing? Because I don't know. I cannot see. Stop sharing. OK, so I go here. OK. OK, OK. okay. So the audio and video both not getting. OK, OK, so the first one. Uh, it was not a question here, so we, which one is the first one? Please share feedback from. The chat window has both uh, comments as well as questions. 
So uh, the first question is the high frequency and desirable effects uh, mentioned in slide number 27. Uh, 27? Yes, 27. So I, I go to page 27. Sorry, Professor. Uh, I, I didn't understand. Did you say I should go to slide 27? Uh, no, uh, in, in slide 27, you have mentioned that there are new uh, some undesirable effects when uh, freak, uh, which causes high frequency waves yes. getting generated. Are they due yes. to numerical dispersion from the grid? Yeah, let me come back to that page. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I will not say it's numerical dispersion. It's it's numerical effect. The the the, the equation of the numerical dispersion doesn't change. Okay. The K beta uh, diagram is the same uh, if we have motion or not. Only if the field is moving, but this, I didn't consider this here. Uh, but in terms of numerical dispersion, it's the same. The problem here is uh, 27, so this one. Uh, the problem here is when you move, it can be moving observer or moving source or moving um, scratch mode. When you move in FDTD, you have to move from one cell to another cell, OK? So for a certain number of cells, you don't move. So the motion will be like the black curve. Instead of the blue curve. That means it's not continuous movement. It's like oscillation, you see? And that oscillation will be related to the, to the delta, D, delta T and delta X. And that's what we see here. So the high frequency is because the source is moving one cell to one, and then we have this high frequency signal. Uh, did I respond so to the that question? Means, uh, so in that in that case, uh, that means uh, if the discretization in this region is very high, the step size also also will reduce, right? In that case, it will be much closer to the blue line. If you, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, if the in the in the problem, if the discretization size of the mesh is actually reduced, uh, yes. then the step size uh, will also get reduced and will be closer to the blue line, right? Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's that's in an that idea. Case, you, can, you can do that, but and then will, they will go to a higher frequency. But uh, if uh, you don't, then uh, then uh, that effect will be. Um, then that numerical dispersion, it's related to something like that, right? Yes, yes, it's related to that. But uh, but uh, but you, you, we found that you need to decrease a lot that delta X if you want to do that, even delta T. Uh, but but, oh. but uh, we found a, uh, a way to, to remove it even without the, the reducing delta X. Just by using two plane wave source. So you have you have a plane wave source in one cell and another in the second cell. OK, if you use that, you see the effect is cancelled. And that's what we see here. There is no higher, uh, higher frequency uh, signal. That's for the plane wave source. Another way is you can you can also take this result and do some uh, uh, post processing uh, uh, with a uh, filter, <laughs> numerical filter. But that's the, we, we this that's what we did before. <laughs> And then we found this idea, which is better actually. If we use so there are some more questions in the chat window. Okay, can you uh, tell me because uh, I have difficulty to see the questions. I don't know. Okay. Uh, uh, is it okay if I read it out to you? Yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Uh, the second next question is. Uh, uh, so in the slide number 41, uh, are there any modifications required for the boundary conditions implemented uh, using mode ABC or PML in slide number 41, where there is a rotating source, I think. So are there any uh, changes required for the boundary conditions, uh, mode ABC uh, or a PML being implemented? OK, so 41, let me go to that one. Uh, you can see my screen, yeah? Yes, Professor. Yeah, so depending here, 
uh, here I use a uh, PMC and PC. We, we use. Uh, I think next like 41, 41 where's a rotating source essentially show. 40, that's 41. That's 41. Oh, OK, uh, then the slide number. This one, this one. Ah, this, uh, yeah, yes. This is the same for rotating source. Here we use PML. We have to use PML. ABC, uh, mu, mu ABC condition doesn't work, so we have to use PML. And that's the boundary for the PML. So what we see here is a PML. A normal PML can implementation can be employed here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Normal PML doesn't have to be used for some special PML, just normal PML. You see the... Yeah, you see here that the wave is the amplitude decreasing inside the PML. Oh, so, okay. Sorry. Uh, can you tell me uh, what's next? Question. Yeah. Next question. Uh, in slide number 55, uh, is the frequency vibration of the order of magnitude, uh, I think it's a uh, frequency vibration of the plate, uh, is it in the order of magnitude equivalent to the frequency of the source? Yes, yes, there is an intermodulation between the the frequency of uh, vibration and the frequency of the source. So you can see here, uh, depending, um, that's for different frequency of zero actually. Um, let me remember which one is this one. F0. No, different frequency of modulation. So 25 to 35, etc. So there is an intermodulation. So you, you will see a peak at the F0, and you will see peaks at Fm minus F0, uh, Fm plus F0, etc. Uh, so the vibration of the plate is, uh, the frequency vibration of the plate is comparable to the frequency of the source. In that case, this is relevant. Yes, yes, in that case, yeah, in that case. As I said, I, I'm, um, we have to do like this, um, uh, no, no, we don't have to do actually necessarily like this, but it's uh, we have to move fast. That's the first thing. Uh, but that's give us an idea about the kind of peaks we should have. If it, uh, the vibration will be much lower speed, then we will we will uh, simulation maybe is difficult to to simulate that with lower speed. But we can we we can uh, predict it based on this kind of uh, analysis. Okay. And the last question is uh, for uh, asked by Pratik is for considering the relativistic motion in the FDTD model of moving object, is it required to use a dynamic mesh grid or a grid which is static? Uh, I didn't understand his question. Uh, I think he's asking whether a dynamic mesh is actually used or a static mesh is being used. The mesh is static. The mesh is static. Okay, okay, Professor, that was the last question. Uh, why ask uh, about uh, dynamic meshing? I didn't uh, get the question. I can think, uh, I, I, that is, I think he's uh, pointing to the ALE kind of mesh, a moving kind of mesh. I think that is what he's uh, Someone pointing to. Asked, can Sherenko effect be validated with this? Ah, is exist? Ah, that I, I asked. Uh, I, yeah, I suggest. I suggest to try. Uh, to, we can. We will try. Actually, we we didn't try, but I think we can. We sure. we can get it. I think we can get get uh, get it. We yeah, sure, really. We have. We okay. have many things. We 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 we. Uh, we have to replicate many uh, theoretical analysis have been done in the literature, but they are not to be done in uh, if, if using full wave Maxwell uh, full wave. Okay. Uh, Analysis by the max expectation. Okay. But for considering the elastic motion in the FDT model, is it well to use dynamic? No, we don't use dynamic. We use static. So if we if we, we want to add the relative motion effect, we I show that we we do a, a pre-processing or post-processing of, of the electric field or electric and magnetic field. That's the way we propose. If we have to use in the literature, they transform the electric and magnetic field, and then they use FDTD 
uh, discretization, etc., etc. But this kind of technique is only for one velocity. Because the formula of max relocation with this technique will have the V. So it's with only with one V. And uh, with that technique, they cannot analyze, for example, uh, many sources moving at different speeds, at different relativistic free speeds. But with our technique, we can use uh, two sources, three sources moving at different relativistic speeds. That's possible. Okay. And do we have an outlook for future topics that are interesting with the moving bodies at LVTD? Um, um, I cannot. It's, there is some uh, some of the idea we're working now, so so I I, I cannot uh, tell them. But uh, yourself, you you so you you can find like Sherenko Sherenko uh, Sherenko is it Sherenko or Sherenko? I forgot effect. Sherenko release. Yeah, that's that's kind of thing. It's possible to to try to to uh, to validate. Um, there is many other ones. Like we we found the Compton effect. In the beginning, we, we 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 thought maybe we could not get this result because in the literature they say you cannot do this analysis with classical uh, 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 classical physics, but we got the same result because some paper uh, support the classical uh, theory for Compton effect. Um, so maybe there is uh, other. Actually, I think there is many other things we can we can try to replicate. We try, for example, to to replicate the. The black body radiation. So by moving multiple uh, scratching objects, we try to to replicate the Planck uh, 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 distribution um, um, by moving the the, the 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 object with the uh, different speeds and uh, using a speed distribution based on, uh, for example, um, uh, Bose-Einstein uh, uh, distribution of. Uh, uh, the speed, and we try to replicate uh, black body radiation. So this is like a linking. Uh, actually, the, we have, we already have a link with the Compton effect. We have a link of the Maxwell equation with Planck constant. For us, the Planck constant will control the speed of uh, of the of the electron. But also, maybe we can also do it with the black body radiation too. We have another link between the Planck constant uh, and the Maxwell equation. Yeah, but there is, there is, I think, many other subjects we can do. Do yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. There is no other yeah, question. Uh, yeah, that's end of the list of questions. It was an interesting talk, Professor. Uh, uh, it was enlightening uh, to see a new direction in the field of research of FDTD. Uh, it was wonderful. It was enlightening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you and have a nice I day, want, Professor. Yeah, yeah, I just want, <laughs> just want to say, uh, to repeat, if uh, someone is interesting, interested to do um, uh, a PhD in Canada, uh, so we're with us in, uh, my, in my research group, uh, please send me your CV. And uh, I, I have a FDT, I work on FDTD, but I have other subjects that I, I show uh, in the beginning. So uh, uh, it could be also another subject. Please, please if you are interested, uh, uh, please send me your CV and we, we can uh, talk. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation again. And thank you all for attending this presentation. So have a good night. For you, it's night. For me, it's a day. Have a nice day, Professor. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.